We are back. This is Peter Schiff here at the Sofitel Hotel. Joining the show now is Bradford Cook, who is a geologist by trade, but he is the CEO of um, Endeavor Silver, which is a company very familiar to uh, Europe Pacific Capital. We've uh, raised uh, money for Endeavor a couple of times. We've had a couple of rounds of financing uh, years back. Uh, full disclosure, I own a significant position personally in the stock. But that being said, as I've said in the past, I cannot give investment advice on this program. And the fact that I own this stock should not be interpreted as my recommending that anybody who's listening to this show actually buy this stock. Uh, but if you are interested in learning about the stock and speaking about the potential uh, of it, uh, whether or not somebody would recommend it, call up a broker at Europe Pacific Capital and speak to them. Uh, tell them what your risk tolerance is, what your investment objectives are. Uh, let's see if they can determine the suitability and then you know, go ahead and discuss whether or not this particular stock would be appropriate for you. But anyway, Bradford, welcome uh, to the Peter Schiff Show. Thank you very much, Peter. Yeah, and you have uh, thus far done a hell of a job uh, with your company, both growing uh, the reserves, the resource base, growing the earnings uh, of the stock. Uh, the price has, has certainly you know, moved up, uh, not necessarily to reflect everything that you've done, because we've been in a very challenging uh, market for the mining sector in the last uh, couple of years. So tell us a little bit, though, about, about your company and, and, and what you're doing and, 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 and how the future looks uh, for Endeavor. Uh, well, uh, Peter, as you know, we are a growth company in the silver mining business. Uh, when I came to see you at the depths of the financial crisis in December of 08, the company was really wondering how long we'd be able to stay in business with silver price having crashed down to $8 an ounce. You know, we were making good money at $12 an ounce at that time, but at $8 an ounce, we were um, noses underwater. So uh, since that time, which is barely three years ago, uh, we've seen the company uh, stock price, for instance, go from a dollar to $13, currently in the $9 range. Uh, we've seen the the production uh, almost triple since that time, and uh, we have just announced recently the acquisition of a third producing silver gold mine in Mexico. So Endeavor is now not only a fast-growing silver mining company, this transaction actually moves us from the junior tier of silver producers into the mid-tier. Yeah, that's great. I remember when you came into my office and silver was down there, I mean, you were hanging on by a thread. And it's like, you know, the stock was cheap because everybody was convinced that silver was going down. And, you know, fortunately, I, I was very optimistic on silver, so I was happy to buy what nobody else wanted. And who not, I don't know, maybe, maybe you got that money from us and it, it kept you afloat. Uh, you know, it, it not only kept us afloat, it allowed us to continue to grow our business in 2009. And just a, a very important point, you know, even though we went to the market through Euro, Cap, uh, Euro Pacific Capital, uh, in February, March of 2009, uh, that money allowed us to grow our reserves 36% and our production 12% that year, and yet the total equity dilution was less than 10%. So it was very, very accretive for our stockholders. Uh, maybe we didn't get a good enough deal then. <laughs> now, now that you put it that way, I think we should we should we should have got more uh, for that money. But no, but it shows you the, the the you know the way the capital markets work and how important it is. Uh, for for te for people to have savings, to have money to invest, because you you know where does it where does the money come from? I mean, how many how many people do you employ now versus how many people you employed back then? Well, so when I went to Mexico as a exploration geologist in two thousand three, we were basically two people with uh, about three hundred thousand dollars in working capital, a ten cent stock, mm -hmm. and a bright idea. And today, Endeavor is New York listed, Toronto listed. Um, over 2,000 employees, 2,700 if you include contractors, uh, three operating mines. Uh, we've built uh, not only robust cash flow and earnings, but a pile of cash. Working capital is $175 million at this time. And, and we're just in great shape, obviously. We, uh, our story is very much an execution story, a steady growth story. And this new acquisition called the El Cubo Mine in Mexico simply uh, is the next leg up for us. Yeah, and what, right now, what is your average production cost to, uh, to mine an ounce of silver? Last year, cash costs of production were $5.08 per ounce, uh, the lowest quartile in the sector. And uh, while we are suffering industry-wide cost inflation, uh, because we have a gold byproduct and we're able to sell the gold as a credit against the cost to produce the silver, we believe that as we continue to expand our gold production, it will help to drive our costs down. Yeah, so, you're, so even, even if silver 
were to be uh, eight dollars, you're still making money. We're still making a lot of money. Yeah. So and you know how and now at you know twenty eight, which is where it is now, and that's even like I think this is kind of the trough. I think that this is this is you know this is the dip. I think silver is going a lot higher. So well, I mean I think f- we hit fifty dollars once. I think we could hit fifty again and. I think ultimately, I think 50 is going to end up being support one day, not resistance. So there's a couple of points there, Peter, that I'd like to reflect on. One is that uh, buy low, sell high is supposed to be the axiom in this business. And you did very well on uh, buying Endeavor at the bottom of the trough in (laughs) in 2008. Uh, People reflect on the spectacular runs in the precious metals last year and the stocks. Our stock also went to a high of $13 uh, virtually a year ago. it's, it's not appropriate to think that because we're in a 12-month correction, that's the future direction of silver mm-hmm. and the future direction of our stock. It's just like the, f- the financial crisis of 2008. And the second point I want to make is that uh, if you'd asked me in August of 2010 when silver was at $18 an ounce what I thought about $30 an ounce in 2012, I would have been thrilled. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, none of us predicted a round trip to $50 silver and back. Yeah. Well, but even now at this at the current price, or you you know your stock is what trading around nine bucks, right? Um, let me take let me take a look at I have it on I have it on my screen, uh, but yeah, eight eighty at that price, right? What, what what's your PE? So uh, based on our Q one performance and the current market cap of eight hundred million dollars, our PE is running about ten because we've had twenty million dollars in earnings in Q one. Mm-hmm. And our PCF price to cash flow uh, is running about six. Right. And what's what's your growth rate on your earnings? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> there. Um, I won't give you a number because it's really high. Yeah. So, so you're talking about. I mean, you're growing your earnings at a, a at a multiple of your PE. Correct. So, see, normally when you have a growth story, uh, you know your your you know your 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 PE is going to reflect your growth rate because people are going to pay more for growing earnings than for flat earnings. But here you have a situation where your stock trades at a discount to a market multiple, even though you're growing your earnings much faster than the market. And to me, all that shows is extreme pessimism uh, on the part of investors that your earning growth is not sustainable. The market is betting that earnings are going to fall off because they think the price of silver is going to collapse. Listen, in the middle of the biggest correction in the silver business in the last three years, uh, we made $20 million bucks in the first quarter. I mean, we love these prices, and we, we have a reasonable expectation that silver and gold prices will continue to progress. In fact, there's another point here. Uh, buy low, sell high is the axiom in the investment business. Well, it applies to businesses as well. If we tried to buy this new mine uh, a year ago, we would have been paying a lot more for it than we are today. Yeah, that's, that's acquisitions are a lot better, especially if you don't have to give up stock to acquire. If you can use some of the cash that you earned, and use it to acquire more resources on a dip. You know that's that's a great you know use of the funds. I mean, I don't need the dividends. I just assume you buy. You know, you get more. In fact, there's I, I read at some one point there was a point where you were storing some of the silver rather than selling it as the price dips. And you you know because you could silver and gold are money. I mean, why hold cash? You can hold silver and sell it at some future date when the price is more favorable, and then you'd get an even bigger gain. You know, we believe that silver and gold, having historically been money, are very useful as a currency for us. And from time to time, we do build up our bullion inventories simply because we believe that in the short term, uh, we'll capture higher prices. And that's a month-to-month decision. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's just extra because if you, if you sold it, you'd simply put money in the bank and earn zero interest on it. Correct. Yeah, so you might as well have it in something uh, real. Uh, because it's already been mined, the cost of producing it, I don't think it, uh, what does it cost you to store it? Uh, nothing. Oh, all right, well, that's good. <laughs> we, we, we pay a refiner to refine it, and part yeah. of the deal is that they'll actually stockpile the bullion for us for free. All right, well, that's that's a good deal. So you got zero storage, and they, they, you know, the, as long as the interest rates are so low, that, that seems to that seems to work for me you know, instead, of, instead of having, instead, and I know there have been a few other companies that have done that. Uh, you know, where they recognize, hey, we're not going to sell into, because people forget you have the opportunity. Uh, you know, you, you can choose the time just because you pull it out of the ground 
and oh, there's been a dip in the market. You, you don't have to. You don't have to take that price. You don't have to hit that bid. You can. You can time strategically when you want to sell. Uh, and not only that, we are one of the very few, perhaps maybe only one of two, silver producers who take our product all the way to refined bullion, and that's what gives us the flexibility to sell or not sell on a weekly basis. Yeah. Does it surprise you though that you know, given all of the concerns about fiat currencies, what's per worries about the euro? Uh, worries about the dollar, all these massive deficits, and everybody always saying we need to print money. That's what everybody is, is, is in Europe saying. We need more money printing. We need more stimulus. We're saying we need more money printing. The Chinese are printing. The Japanese are printing. And everybody is looking for a safe haven. And the safe haven they choose is the dollar and U.S. treasuries. Why aren't they choosing silver and gold right now? Well, in fact, in the past, many times people have gone to gold and silver as a hedge against currency debasement. Uh, monetary inflation would be the polite way of describing it. And uh, uh, I believe that is around the corner. You know, it is absolutely unavoidable that the accumulated debts of sovereign countries like Greece and businesses like the real estate business in the States, when you build uh, uh, un, uh, unrepayable piles of debt, there's only one way out, and that is yeah. to Yeah, it is money. amazing right now that the treasuries are ste stealing some of the thunder uh, from gold and silver, but they're going to get it back because the treasuries are no more a safe haven than, than Greek bonds as far as I'm concerned. It's like, you know, Facebook. People bought it, but once they own it, they're going to want to get rid of it when they look under the hood and see what they bought. Hey, but, Brad, hey, thanks for coming by. Uh, appreciate the good work at, at Endeavor Silver, and hope you enjoy the conference. Everybody else will be back. we got another segment coming up. Uh, we will be right back.